Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. These are Benchmade bug outs in CPM 20 CV which is a, uh, this whole setup is a Blade HQ exclusive as far as I understand. Fortunately I've got links to Blade HQ right down here in the description so if you'd like to pick this knife up you can find it by using the link right at the top of the description that you're watching right now. Why do I have two of them? Um, these were sent by two people, uh, Teddy and, uh, Gerald. Thank you so much for sending these guys along. Um, I've got a lot of knives coming in and I always have lists of things that I'm looking for. People sending me emails. So basically this is just a mix up. I said yes to two people and forgot that I had already said. So anyways, we've got two of them here, which is fine because I can talk about consistency and quality. These both appear to be brand new and, uh, we're going to touch on that, um, and, uh, compare the two. Um, but, uh, anyways, We'll go ahead and move forward here. Thank you so much to my generous patrons for supporting me right now. If you are enjoying the daily knife content on this channel and you'd like to support me, you can find my link for Patreon down in the description. And please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. We're going to move one of these out of the way. Get a measurement of this guy here real quick. Overall length of the Benchmade bug out. By the way, I've already reviewed the bug out. Um, if you want to check out my original full review, you can. Just type in metal complex bug out and you'll find it. This is going to be more of an overview and uh, I'll just give my thoughts on the 20 CV variant. Overall length of the bug out coming in at 7.4 inches overall, not quite 7.5 inches. Blade length is coming in at, you could call that 3 and a quarter. Cutting edge is coming in at 3 inches, so it's going to be over that legal limit for some people. We'll go ahead and do some size comparisons here real quick. Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1, Rat 1 coming in at 8.6 inches overall. How about up against the uh, Spyderco PM2, Spyderco PM2 coming in at 8.6 three inches overall, some debris on that guy, sorry about that. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue coming in at eight inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Bailout? That's a good size comparison. Benchmade Bailout coming in at, eh, we'll measure it from that lanyard loop thingy. I always forget the length in this guy. Call it eight inches, something like that. Eight inches, or if you want to get picky, 7.8 inches on the handle, or to the handle. Um, there will be a full comparison and battle video between those two coming up, but not today. How about up against the Spyderco Pair 3? Spyderco Pair 3 coming in at seven and a quarter inches overall. Good size comparison there. Last but not least, the Benchmade Mini Griptilian. Mini Griptilian coming in at 6.75 inches overall. How's the action this guy? Uh, a lot of you guys are familiar with the bug out. Um, they run on phosphor bronze, right? They use the axis lock. Feels pretty similar to every bug out I've ever handled. Nice and snappy. These are new and not falling shut yet, but they are not gritty. Something that I've heard a lot of people talk about with bug outs in the past is that they are gritty right about here. This area right here will feel a little bit gritty on some. Um, a lot of people will try to adjust that. Those both feel exactly the same, by the way, exactly the same. A lot of people will try to adjust the pivots, add some lubricant, do a whole bunch of different things, take it completely apart, polish the washers, blah, blah, blah. Just let them break in. My bug out that I customized and put titanium on, it was gritty as all hell when I bought it. Standard, uh, you know, G10, or not G10, standard blue grivery and S30V blade. Super gritty. I just let it do its thing. Took two weeks, it was fine. Totally glassy. Actually, you know, releasing the axis bar would cause the blade to just fall. I have no doubt that these will do that too. Both of these can be whipped into, into place. You have to let the uh, axis bar go at the right time to do it. But yeah, that's fine. If they look like that, you're probably good to go, right? Um, so if yours is a little gritty, don't freak out. Just just let it do its thing. That axis bar will wear, you know, it, it'll rub against the tank, the rounded tang of the blade and it'll eventually, the both surfaces will smooth out. You'll be fine. Um, but yeah, good enough. Uh, let's go ahead and do carry profile. I mean, do we, do we need to? I don't know, do we need to do all that? The Benchmade bug out is thin, right? Thinner, substantially thinner. I didn't really show it. <laughs> it's the same Benchmade bug out we're all used to. It's very thin, right? What does it weigh? Oh my gosh, these are in G10. I bet they're so much heavier than the Grivery ones. And that's gonna be a deal breaker, right? Oh my gosh, it weighs 0.4 ounces more. No, not even that, 0.35 ounces more 
then my standard Benchmade bug out. How will I ever cope with the additional weight? This is a negative. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking, obviously. It doesn't matter. On this channel, anything that's less than three ounces is basically, it's not something that registers in my brain. So I don't care if the knife is one ounce or three ounces. It doesn't make a difference to me. I know that people, some people will probably get bent out of shape. In fact, they have actually. People have told me, you have to take that into consideration. You can't wave it off. I'm aggressively waving it off. Sorry. If it really means that much to you and you do something day to day with your knife and all of the other stuff that you carry on your person where weight really does matter that much, then I think you have more of a reason to be concerned with it than me. But me and the vast majority of people who are simply carrying a knife and a couple other simple objects like their wallet and their phone, right? Maybe one other thing. The difference between 1.85 ounces and 2.2 ounces is absolutely meaningless. So, the benefit here is that you get G10 instead of Grivery, which feels way better than Grivery. Way, way better. That that hollowed out Grivery, I hate that stuff. It's plenty strong, right? Strength to weight ratio is fine. You get to save yourself, you know, 0.35 ounces for the same or potentially even higher strength, right? Whatever. The G10 feels better. Now, this guy's a lot more expensive, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. But, yeah, you're fine. Carry profile is great, super, super light, uh, super, uh, I'm sorry, super deep carry clip, right? It's got a great clip. This thing carries like a dream, right? The only thing that carries, I guess, if you want to call it better, right, better, is the mini version, which I don't think there's a 20 CV version of yet, but I'm sure that there will be. Anatomy on this guy, you're looking at gray G10, you're looking at green thumb studs, and you're looking at green barrel spacers. There is also a satin finished version of this guy. Both of these are have the black coating on them. That's just how it happened. But the satin finished ones are also available. What The link down below will take you to every variant of this specific bug out that is available. Honestly, I kind of like the green. I think that's really cool. If you didn't know, the Benchmade bug out is also on the custom shop where you can go in and select whatever you know material if you want your driver if you want your g10 right different colors of g10 i think there's maybe a, a couple of different texture patterns i'm not really sure blade finish blade steel right uh different colors of uh, thumb studs and and um barrel spacers right now i think if you try to recreate this exact knife on the custom shop i can almost guarantee maybe i'm wrong i can almost guarantee if you try to go g10 20 cv on these guys through the custom shop you're gonna end up paying more money than this guy making this knife a better deal than the 20 CV bug out that you might create on the custom shop. However, you don't get the opportunity to create exactly what you want. So yeah, I think the color setup that they chose, green, gray, and black is pretty cool. I think it's gonna appeal to a lot of people. If you hate green, well, then this probably isn't gonna be your thing and you're just gonna have to spend some more money on the custom shop or just deal with one of the other you know, versions of the bug out. Um, it's the whole thing is unchanged from the original bug, bug out for anybody who doesn't know it's very thin on the spine It's incredibly thin behind the edge making this a very performance oriented blade, right? Your cutting edge to overall weight ratio is excellent for those of you who care about that um, Like I said profile very very thin. I love the texturing on this guy the the grivery There's the original version right the it's got a little bit It's got this like area cut out right here, and it's got kind of like some uh, it's like knurling but on plastic this diamond pattern that they do on this G10 one is much more visually appealing and it still offers a good amount of traction. Not that it really, really needs it um, because the ergonomic lines are pretty good. And honestly, I'm not going to be doing something this knife uh, with this knife where getting an absolutely secure, like the most perfectly secure grip that I can imagine is going to be that necessary. This is not a hard use knife. I'm sure it can handle a lot of outdoor stuff, but for stuff that you might do with um, an incredibly, like, like if you if you find yourself needing a you know a cold steel triad lock type knife for your knife tasks right and you're wondering maybe I should you know rotate in a bug out here or there, uh, the type of stuff that you know you would need the triad lock for is not the type of stuff that you would want to use the bug out for right obviously this isn't a hard use knife is what I'm saying, tip is pretty delicate but again right don't be stabbing it in prying stuff around. Both of these guys look pretty good on the edge. The one here on the left has a slightly wider final cutting bevel. And it is that way on both sides. But they are even, right? It looks good. I'm not seeing... As long as it's symmetrical on both sides, you're going to see a little bit of, you know... Uh, like it, every single knife, you know, not just with Benchmade, but like even if you're looking at Spyderco knives, ZT knives, you're going to see some variances in exactly how wide the cutting bevel is, even though they're supposed to all be exactly the same. It's when you have a wider cutting bevel on one side 
versus the other side, all right? If it's thin on this side and wider on this side, right, then it, that sucks, right? It should be it, it should be symmetrical, right? And it is, it just varies between the two knives. Other than that though, they're, they're seriously, they're identical. Um, hardware check on these guys. I will go ahead and just do the pivot. By the way, you can get my tools down in the description. They are very inexpensive and very, very recommendable. On both of these knives, as is the case with most Benchmades, you're looking at T10 for the pivot. The rest of the screws, which there are many, are T6. I've taken this thing apart. A lot of people watching this video have taken these, thing apart, uh, these things apart. The fact that they are T6 is the least of your worries. The, the, it's the amount of hardware and the fact that it is a Benchmade using an axis lock that's going to make it difficult and frustrating to take apart. It is possible, though. I did it. Uh, I think I did it on camera. I can't remember. In any case, I did manage to um, install titanium scales in the, on one of these guys or, or a bug out a while back. But anyways, yeah, all the way around, edges nicely chamfered, right? Truthfully, fit and finish on these guys. This is a newer Benchmade model, and it goes right along with what I've been saying for a while now, is that it seems like Benchmade's fit and finish all the way around has been gradually getting better and better and better um, in terms of just consistency, in terms of quality, and that appears to be the case here. Um, neither of these knives, I think, yeah, no blade play on this guy. And no blade play on this guy. It's the same thing, right? Um, and that's good. Uh, I'm glad to see that. Even if I do get a little bit of side-to-side -side blade play on something like a bug out, I know that I can just tighten that pivot down just a little bit, and eventually it'll smooth up over time and everything will work out. But, yeah, appears pretty good. All the way around, you know, there's really nothing to... Nothing to complain about here. The pocket clip's in a good position. The pocket clip is actually one of the most excellent pocket clips that exists, right? You've got a captive pivot, so adjusting or removing the pivot should be really, really easy. Downsides to the, uh, to the bug out are the same as the last time I reviewed the knife. It just is very, very thin and small, which is exactly what it was designed to be, right? For people who like more robust knives, it's not going to be your thing. For people concerned with ratios, right? Maximizing cutting edge to overall weight ratio, right? And you're your, your carry profile, all that stuff, these are going to speak to you. Um, that's, that's just the case. It's going to be for some people, not going to be for others. A lot of people consider this to be the greatest EDC folding knife of all time. I certainly think that it um, caters to a wide range of people. And uh, it, it definitely, you know, it's like, it's like Benchmade listening to what everybody, all the, the most nitpicky people ever, you know, listening to all of them and then creating one knife. And I think that's largely what they did. And those people really, really enjoy this knife. You know, for a long time I thought, I don't really like the standard version of this, I just want to add titanium to it. And I did, and it was okay, and then I got bored with it. So, while the bug out is not for me personally, I do understand why so many people like this. In a lot of ways, it is just, it, it is a better choice, you know, for a lot of people. It truly is, right? Um, the biggest issue with this knife is, oh my gosh, who would have guessed? The price. You're going to pay more money you know for a benchmade than its direct competition i'm not talking about civivi knives and i'm not talking about cjrb these are american made knives using premium materials right they seem to have better fit and finish overall um you know there's there's these these knives factually cost more to make regardless of how you feel about you know whether it's just g10 and 20 cv right yeah you can get knives that cost less money right but these are made in the united states a little bit more that goes into them they cost more to manufacture. Given that, right, they're still more expensive than, you know, like Spyderco knives, which in a lot of, a lot of, you know, people will tell you right now, Spyderco is kind of pushing the envelope on their prices, right? Um, but like, you know, Kershaw makes production knives in the United States and they're substantially less expensive. There's a few other companies out there, but a lot of people argue, well, you're paying for the excellent warranty service that you get through Benchmade. That is absolutely something you should factor into price. There are a lot of great warranties out there, but Benchmade really shines above just about everybody. Their warranty is really, really excellent, right? Even still, though, <laughs> we're a bit high. $212 for G10 and 20CV, right? You get all the great uh, design elements, all the great uh, you know ratios and stuff like that. For a lot of people, it's going to be a no-brainer, right? If you've already decided, I want a Benchmade Bug Out in 20 CV, I'm just trying to decide if I want a Custom Shop one or this one. Well, this one's the better value in that scenario, right? Um, but uh, I, I'm looking at the Benchmade Griptilian, the Mini Griptilian, and the Large Griptilian in 20 CV, right? Uh, those are coming in at, what, 175 to 180? 
that that's the most that these should cost. I don't I, I don't know why they're so so much more expensive, right? You can get the Super Freak for 195. There's a lot of knives in Benchmade's lineup that a lot of people would say are overpriced, and this is still this still still clears those by a long shot. This is you know a lot of capitalization on um, the fact that it is very very popular, right? And it's a version of the knife that's been being called for for a long time. For some people, this is really, really going to be worth it. It's just the price. That, the price is just ah. The Benchmade Bug Out itself is a recommendable knife. This version of it is like functionally in the design and the materials. I think 20 CV is excellent. What is 20 CV? For those of you who don't know, 20 CV is one of the most preferred EDC steels that it, uh, steels that exists right now. Excellent corrosion resistance, resistance, incredible edge retention. Right. Um, which is perfect. It doesn't have a lot of toughness, but it doesn't need a lot of toughness. This isn't a, a knife that was designed to be used in circumstances where toughness would play a role. So I think the steel is just about perfect. It's really going to make that EDC enthusiast happy, right? Um, 212 bucks is a lot of money, but this is it, 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 this is a good knife, right? The materials that they used, um, the the look of it, the feel of it, right? How easy it is to carry. It's a good knife. It's something I can recommend, but I just want to make it clear that I'm definitely like on the side of the fence where it's like this this is too much money for this <laughs> it's it's just expensive that's the biggest nitpick with this is it's 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 too expensive right um if there were other things about this knife that you know were bothering me or other things that i might consider a flaw then it, it might keep it from being on the recommended knives playlist but it's really just the price the price is really the main thing that bothers me I'm still able to recognize, and despite this not being a design that really does it for me, it's not something that I'm going to go out of my way to purchase. It's not about how much money it costs. It's about, you know, just what it is. It's just too thin and too too small for my personal, that just, just goes against my taste, right? But I'm still able to appreciate what it is, who it's for, um, the fact that it is going to be really, really good for a lot of people. I mean, this is a truly excellent knife for a massive audience of people, right? You just got to get around that price. So still a recommendable knife. Just wish it cost less money. This is going to be going on my Benchmade Knives playlist as well as my Recommended Knives playlist. So you guys can check it out. Like I said, you can check out links for the Benchmade Bug Out here in 20CV. I'll also include links to the Benchmade Bug Out, the standard version for those of you who don't really need the 20CV and don't want to pay that much money. The other version, the standard version is much less money I'll link that down there and i'll also link benchmade knives in general so you guys can check out what else benchmade has going on if you like benchmade but you're just not really all about this fun to look at though i'm really glad i got an opportunity to take a look at these glad that benchmade did it i, I definitely am glad that they went ahead and did a 20 cv version of this we needed that um that's gonna be pretty much it today guys um thanks again to the gentleman who sent me their uh bug outs for review uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex guys if you enjoyed this video Please leave a like if you'd like to check out my other content I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like so check those out And if you enjoy all my content go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day